Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming, and some of you may on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, and I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lust Shards, Tate's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just want to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. No, right there. Alright, I almost forgot we flew all the way here, so it makes sense to do the same on the way back. Descension along the forest tree line made me once again a little jumpy, which meant more claws in poor Tate's stomach. He doesn't seem to mind. As soon as my eyes got brave enough to peek, I was stunned by the sky's colors. We enjoyed a silent ride for a while as my eyes jumped from cloud to cloud. I doubt I'll ever get tired of this. It's a good way to discover new places I can teleport to. Ah, so my suspicions were right. You do have to know a place before teleporting to it. Obviously, otherwise I'd be in, I'd be in your mom's bed. Smack. Ouch! Keep my mom's name out of your damn mouth, you silly goober. Your mom's name is Mom? You know what I meant. <laughs> Don't read too much into my jokes. Speaking of names, what do you think of Ray? Ray? Short for Raymond, I presume? It's pretty nice. More like Ray de la Sombras. Huh? Doesn't that mean Shadow King? Damn it, of course you speak Spanish. Wait, Tate. Is this about your nick your nickname game? I wouldn't call it a game, but sure. So what about it? It's silly. You just said it's nice! Not the full nickname. It just feels a bit over the top. Like Tartarus or Shadow Prince or Phantom. Purple Demon? No. Damn it! I do have to agree with what Aiden said before. Seems a bit disrespectful, or at least weird to be looking for a cool new nickname. Even if it's for a hunter's career. Your name is fine as it is. Yeah, just a yeah, just a cool nickname. I suppose you might be right. Tate ends our conversation there, and we continue the rest of the way in silence. <clears throat> Thankfully, it wasn't awkward since the view was taking our attention away anyway. I can never get enough of these those reds, and oranges, and yellows. Some of my favorite colors. Not purple. Nah, it's just a motif I'm rocking. Because let's be honest, I'm slaying it. And not as much as those piercing pink piercing pink eyes of yours. Smooth, but too cheesy. I prefer sweet over savory. I have to be cheesy. What else did I swoop you off your feet with my broom for? Stop. Don't cover your ears. You're going to fall. You said it's impossible for me to fall. It's impossible to get hurt, but if you break your heart first with your denial, then I won't be able to save you. Ah! He continues to make puns, make cheesy remarks, and overall make me smile while blushing all the way back. It was a bit hard not to jump off sometimes, but as much as my ears were scratched by his words, my brain is waiting impatiently to hear what else he comes up with. At last, he lands the broom near the Academy's front garden, where we left off. We were just in time to catch two tired figures emerging from the front door of the building. Beaten up might be a better way to describe them, but now that they're, clo now that they're closer... Oh, God. Hey, you two. Hope you didn't get in trouble without us around. <laughs> Second L. Coffee time. Uh, <clears throat> not as much as you did. What happened? Let me guess, Aiden's ex finally decided to team up. Not even the Defender's leader can stop a crowd that big. You're lucky my fists are tired, Munchkin. No thanks, not, not into fisting. You have that many failed relationships, Aiden? He looks at me surprised, turning embarrassed. Not failed. We just had different interests in mind at the time. His interests were a dick and while theirs were loving. That's not entirely false, but very broad. And overly simplified. I promise I'm not that shallow. Well, not X's, but we did have to stop my members from throwing a new summoner suit out the window because he accidentally entered our headquarters. Then got in a fight with my slayers, but retreated since they had weapons ready. Oh, wow. Where was Haima while this was happening? Leading the slayers. Oh. We finally managed to calm the waters after me and Down did a fake arm wrestling to see which shard is better, and we tied. Ama was a bit furious about that. Are you going to be able to manage them? No, they'll be fine. There's always Monty to take their anger on. Monty's resilient. But enough about our day. What about you, Travis? What did you think of your first day here? You should probably go take some shots at the nurse's office after spending so much time in close proximity to this cat. Don't listen to him, Travis. He's just jealous. Jealous of what, exactly? Well, obviously it's me because we... Hey, why don't you respond to Dallin's question while we head to the cafeteria? I think we're all starving, right? 
You can say that twice. Actually, don't. It'll make me starve more. I can certainly use more than bread in my system right about now. We make our way to the cafeteria. The three guys take turns leading the way, since I'm the only one that doesn't know where it is. Tank tells Dallin about our forest walk, but he sure as hell likes to exaggerate things. Then I make three hoops in the air while standing up. Travis stands there absolutely and utterly safe while I jump off and call the broom back to me, catching it in midair and getting back on. And then everybody clapped. Exactly! Seems like he had a lot of fun. And Travis gave me some tips on how to teleport things in my mind. Is that actually true? Yeah, pretty much. Tate continues with these stories while not along. Aiden, unlike Dallin, obviously doesn't buy most of them, but they're harmless and we both let it slide. It's pretty late, which means there are fortunately enough empty seats for, the, for us four. We're all hungry, so we get multiple trays full of different food for the table. Mine in particular had half a rotisserie chicken, some mashed potatoes, and a large green salad. Tate got two burgers with a ton of fries. It's like now. Coffee time. Hmm. Aiden is a steak kind of guy with fancy grilled veggies on the side, and Dallin's tray is basically filled with all of our meals combined. That man can eat. I'm not rushing to be anywhere, and it's a nice golden cool evening, so I decide to take it easy on the food and make some conversation with these guys. Or at least the ones I interacted with before in a meaningful way. After all, can't ask someone a personal question if you didn't win any friendship points for them before, right? <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I'll talk to... Hey. Hey, Tate. That's me. So, you're a first year. That means you'll be joining the Sorcery Shard after the auditions, right? Yep. So, why did you have a bad? Why do you have a badge? The two guys next to him give him a sour look. Yeah. Tell him why. I'm sure it'll be a completely innocent reason. I, um, I stole it. Why? I wanted it. You don't usually have stolen goods displayed on your chest like that. Well, we got it back from him multiple times. But he always sneaks one out anyway. So they... So they finally decided to give up. Smartest decision they ever made. I've had it since I was 13. Dallin cringes at the severe rule-breaking confession. The previous leader of the Sorcery Shard thought it was cute that I wanted to be in their shard so badly, so he didn't try to stop me. And Miranda gave up after my second scavenge. So you're a long-lasting serial troublemaker. Pleasure to meet you. I should change the subject before Dallin manifests the first angry vein in his life. I'll talk to Tate. Hey, Tate. That's me. Oh, um... Okay. I'll talk to Aiden. Okay. I don't think I'm good enough friends with him to deserve answers to my personal questions. Maybe if I chose his brochure back then or something. I should try somebody else. I'll do Dallin. I don't think I'm good enough friends with him to deserve any questions. I should try somebody else. Try your fucking mom! <laughs> okay. That's about it. Now that he's no longer hungry, Dallin happily gives us some more juicy details about what happened today. So get this, a summoner entered the Defender's headquarters by accident. Obviously, had they had to overreact as always. But the guy wasn't just some guy, he was another recommended student like you. Everyone was a little disappointed he didn't become a Defender, but we already got one of those, so maybe it's for the best. Yeah, it is definitely for the best. You're just salty that no recommended students chose your shard. And how many have you got, Pipsqueak? One. That coal guy. I, s I see, so there is still time. He glances at me for a moment before returning to his leftovers. Tate kept, Tate kept me a secret. Probably doesn't want to stir their doesn't want to stir problems. Letting others know his shard got two recommended students. Take a meal, coffee time. Or you forgot you're technically a big deal. That's another possibility, yes. Speaking of first speaking of first years, I heard tomorrow you two will have a little special assignment to do. Special? The sorcery auditions. Oh, right, I forgot about that. I'm sure you'll do great. I've known Tate for a long time, so I don't doubt he'll have no problems in there. And recommended students are impossible to fail. That's usually how it goes, yes. Can't wait. You don't seem too excited. What? No. I'm super excited. Sure, because that wasn't awkward sarcasm in your voice, and I'm totally not sensing panic when you hear the words auditions. Hey, so, um, Travis. Tomorrow I was thinking maybe you'd want to, you know, 
before practice starts or, or your auditions. Angry Cat stands up from his seat. Hmm. <clears throat> what? Why are you narr Why are you narrating yourself? And ask the dumb, annoying tiger. Are you trying to steal my partner? Partner? He looks at me, a little shocked and confused, completely forgetting the dumb and annoying comment. Lucky for tight. Hunting partner. Oh. So what if I am? I'm just trying to occupy his time with actual important stuff. Your dick ain't that important. Oof. For your information, me and Travis have very important things to do tomorrow morning. Such as... None of your business. Now, peasant, and Dallin. Aye. Clean this table up. I'm taking the spotted specimen with me, and we'll do unspeakable things to each other elsewhere. What is he talking about? Tate picks me up by, by one arm and drags me along. Aiden is once again stunned by his words, while Dallin just a tad oblivious. All right, don't get into too much trouble. Hold on now! I ain't cleaning your fucking mess! Come back here! And what do you mean by things? Hey! We are now too far away from for Aiden to start chasing. I look back over my shoulder apologetically as I continue to be dragged along. I manage to catch Aiden's face softening as our eyes meet, and he and Dallin pick up our trays and head for the kitchen. Don't be sorry for him. We had to assert dominance. Still, wasn't it a little mean? The, the way we left like that? I had to get you out before they asked about your powers. The conversation seemed to be going in that direction. You trust me, don't you? Yeah. With every ounce of my being, although that might be foolish to do. Since since today is Tuesday, Marina, ma Marina must have dinner with Oliver at that disgusting fish restaurant by the coast. So I'll sacrifice my dignity and step foot in that place for our sake. It seems a bit rude to interrupt them like that. It must be about done anyway. Now what could someone possibly have dinner for? Stay here. I'm going to go ask them about our rooms and get our keys. Be back in a minute. If you're going to teleport, can't you just take me with you? I already used my teleportation a lot today. If I take you with me, I'd be drained. Understandable. Then I'll wait for you. Hopefully I won't end up sleeping on this bench. He gives me a final salute before the blue light makes him vanish. Second like, you know, water time. Or coffee time, I should say. Ugh. That is the last of the coffee. Alright. Still, I cannot believe I forgot to ask about my room. Good thing Tate is almost as airheaded as me. I never realized how much distance we've covered by running from the cafeteria, and up to the middle of this secluded park. It doesn't seem like a random location either. There is a single illuminated bench by the sidewalk, surrounded by the occasional wild daisy through the grassy floor and flower-filled bushes. This is quite nice, actually. I wouldn't even mind sleeping here tonight. Well, not sleeping in anything other than a soft bed. It's the least you can do for me. The least I can do for you? Am I in your debt or something that I didn't know? What? But how could you ever deny me a basic need such as soft sheets? I've been in prison for centuries. Do you have no heart? You're so dramatic. Besides, I was joking. I don't want to sleep with bugs swarming around. Phew! I take a seat on the bench and wait. The night sky is brighter than expected, with no clouds in sight. It makes it easy for the stars and the moons to demonstrate their full potential. Are you afraid of the dark? That would be such a creepy thing to say if you didn't have that squeaky little baby voice. I told you already, it's just how your mind imagines it. It's not my fault. Should I do a different voice for Scribbles? That'd be interesting. Damn, I can't have a normal conversation with you, can I? Did we ever? I'll be in the back of your mind for a while. Good luck being alone with your thoughts. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there. Let me know if y'all prefer me doing a lighter, kind of sillier voice for Scribbles, since that is how Travis does indeed. Uh, does indeed imagine it. But anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. But before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our patrons. Thank you to all of our Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you for everything y'all do. We greatly appreciate y'all. Um, <laughs> it's, it's your uh, contributions have definitely helped us through some rough shit. And thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you so much for going a bit above and beyond. We greatly appreciate that little extra that you donate every month. And for our gold tier patron, Amr, thank you so, so, so much for the, uh, for the for subscribing to our ultimate tier. We hope you like your new icon, um, and we hope that you will continue to contribute towards us in the future. But if y'all want your names on the uh, in the credits and get a shout-out by me at the end of a video, all you got to do is subscribe to our Patreon. Anyway, 
I love you guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!